much for joining us today for another episode of Zoo School Live. Um, I'm Holly and this is Marissa. Um, we do want to start the day with a couple more shout outs. We really like doing that with you guys every morning. Um, our first shout out today is to Jamie, age 11. Um, she actually assigned herself a project to look through our website and Facebook um, at all the animals we have here and find out uh, their level of endangerment and um, just stats and the different names of them. So that was a really fun project for her to work on. We also have another awesome piece of art. Um, this is, if you guys watched yesterday, you met Oliver. This is from Lizzie, age six in Collegeville. And it's just the sweetest little picture of Oliver. She really captured his fuzziness, I think. So we really like it. We also wanted to give a shout out to Rebecca from Dresher PA. She's turning eight years old today. So happy birthday. All right, um, so we're gonna get started in just a minute. We just wanna remind you guys, if you wanna help out with the zoo, there's a couple things you can do for us. Um, you can donate on our emergency fund, which has been so, so helpful that so many people have been doing that. It really is keeping the zoo running smoothly. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and also keep watching because we're having a lot of fun making these, and we hope you guys are enjoying watching them. All right, I'm gonna throw it back over to Marissa. She is with Monty, um, a little snake friend for you guys. All right, yes. everyone. So this here is Monty, and Monty is a ball python. And these guys get their name because of kind of the shape that they make. So you can see right now, even Monty, he's kind of curled up. That's We did wake him up to come to work today, so he might be a little sleepy still, so that's why he's all curled up and snuggly. So our, our friend Monty here, he is... Uh, one of our ambassador animals here at the zoo. So he is one of many snakes that we have that live behind the scenes here at the zoo and help us educate the public about how amazing snakes are. And even if you're a little nervous about snakes, we hope that you can learn some pretty cool facts about our friend Monty today to maybe learn a little bit more or maybe even start to like snakes. I don't know, who knows, we'll see. So Monty here, he has been here for 17 years at the Elmwood Park Zoo. Um, he's currently in his 20s, we suspect. We actually don't know his exact birthday, um, so we just celebrate him every day. Uh, but Monty is in his 20s and these guys can live to be maybe into their 30s and maybe even older. So it's pretty tricky to see how big Monty is right now, but he is over three feet long. He's actually a pretty big snake. Um, and these guys can be almost five, maybe even over five feet long. Um, and these guys are native to Central Africa. They like to live in forests um, and even in the savannah. Um, now, our friend Monty, uh, where he's from, it is very hot. He is what we call a cold-blooded animal. Now, that does not mean that his blood is running cold. It just means that he relies on the outside temperature um, to regulate his inside body temperature. So if he wants to warm up, he needs to go sit in the sun. And if he needs to cool down, he needs to go into a cave or underground or... Um, somewhere in the shade where he can cool his body down. Cause unlike us who maybe if we get really hot, right, we could start sweating or if we get too chilly, we might, we might start shivering, right? So all those things are things that our body does to help regulate our body temperature. But Monty here, he can't really do that. So he relies on his outside environment to figure out how his insides are. Um, so temperature for him is really important. And we're going to talk a little bit about that later too. So, Monty here, it looks like he's gonna start exploring his environment a little bit, which is pretty awesome. And you wanna take a close look at what he's doing when he starts to explore his environment. So Monty, you can see he's sticking out his tongue and he's wiggling it around. So that serves a few purposes. Um, he's not making fun of you by sticking his tongue out at you. In fact, he is using that tongue to pick up all kinds of amazing smells. So if you guys tuned in and learned a little bit about Hoggle, the hogno snake, you might already know this, which is pretty amazing. But our friend Monty, he's gonna stick that tongue out, he's gonna wiggle it around, and when he pulls that tongue back into his mouth, he is a special organ on the roof of his mouth. We call that a Jacobson's organ. And so when he sticks that tongue out, he picks up all the smells that are floating around in the air, these little scent particles. 
And when he brings that tongue back in his mouth, those scent particles are gonna touch that organ in the roof of his mouth. So think about organs, like your heart is an organ and your brain is an organ, right? And they have a Jacobson's organ, right? That allows them to, to figure out in their brain what their tongue is smelling, which is pretty cool. Now, if you look real close, you might see that Monty still has nostrils. So don't you worry, he still has a nose. Um, but Monty is just gonna be using that for breathing. He's not really gonna be using that those nostrils for smelling as much as he's using that tongue for smelling. So when he's sticking that tongue out like that and when he's flicking it, when he flicks it really fast or when he sticks his tongue out a lot, that means he definitely smells something that he's interested in and he's, that's how he explores his environment, which is pretty amazing. So Monty here, he is strictly a carnivore. So think about a T-Rex. We're thinking about a carnivore that only eats meat. Now, Monty does not eat chicken nuggets. Right, he's not gonna eat a hamburger. But Monty is going to be hunting for his food. So that means he's gonna be on the lookout for animals, live animals that he's going to try to hunt. Things like mice and rats and maybe even birds. Hello. <laughs> so he's gonna be not only using that sense of smell, but our friend Monty here has a special sixth sense. So not only is Monty able to smell with his tongue, but he's actually able to sense temperature. So we're gonna see if we can adjust my friend Monty here a little bit so that you guys can hopefully see. Oh, there you go, he's spinning around for you guys. So if you guys take a close look on, on Monty's face, kind of by his tongue there, you might be able to see these little holes in his upper lip. And they might be a little tricky to see. They might just look like dark spots from where you are. Um, but those are actually pits, little holes in his face. And he, those pits are super sensitive to temperature. So what he's going to do is he's gonna use those pits on his face to help him sense living, warm-blooded animals, right? So we talked about how Monty's cold-blooded. Well, mammals, things like mice and even people, right? We're warm-blooded animals. So Monty is gonna be using that, that, that heat sense to help him find his dinner, which is absolutely amazing. These guys can sense temperature changes even in the smallest degrees. So if they were looking at a rock and then looking at a mouse, they will be able to tell which one is the living animal. Um, and that's what they're gonna try to find to munch up. So Monty's gonna be using that, that heat sense to help him explore his environment and to hunt for his food. A fun fact about Monty is that these guys are actually nocturnal animals. These ball pythons are nocturnal, which means that they are awake during the night and asleep during the day, for the most part. So our friend Monty's gonna be doing a lot of moving around at nighttime. And when he's moving around at nighttime, he's not really relying on his eyes as much as he might be relying on that, that sense, that heat sense, right? So to give you guys a little bit of an idea, um, so we use uh, this temperature, uh, this temperature recorder to help us um, take care of our reptiles here at the zoo, which is pretty exciting. Um, but we also use it to kind of check out the temperature of different things. So you guys can see that certain things, like maybe this rock here, is at about 66 degrees, right? And for example, a person runs somewhere in the 90s. So we might not be able to tell that that's, we might be able to tell that that's a non-living thing, right? Because of the temperature it is, um, which is pretty cool. And that helps us read some temperature. But Monty, he's gonna be doing that all just with his own, uh, with his own body, right? With those own pits on his face, which is pretty amazing. So we actually have a fun little experiment to do today. Um, so we have some really cool tools here at the zoo. Um, and to give you a little bit of an idea of what Monty might actually be seeing when he's using those heat sensing pits on his face, um, we have a little bit of a visual representation. So Holly here is gonna try to get me on, on this thermo sensor um, to see if we can see what temperature, see if I run a little warmer than Monty. So. We're gonna have Holly, Holly check, check this out and I'll see if I can wave to you guys through the camera. All right. Um, <laughs> we borrowed this little flare camera from our veterinary department and then we're gonna see if we can see what Marissa looks like when we get her in this little picture. So can you guys see Marissa waving at us? So this might be sort of what Monty sees when he is sensing a prey around him. So at the zoo here, um, 
this is a really fun experiment. Um, but here at the zoo, we think that his adaptation of his sixth sense is super cool, um, and we like to use it in different ways as well. Um, we don't use it quite in the same way as him. We're not going to be finding mice at night, um, but we use it for other ways, um, and one of those ways is checking and seeing how healthy some of our animals are. So if you guys have ever scratched your knee or um, hurt your arm in some way, that area might kind of feel warm to you. Um, that area actually is warm. As your body is healing, um, different areas of your body can be different temperatures. Um, we actually had a very um, high-tech version of this FLIR camera donated to us from Metropolitan Veterinary Associates called a Digitherm. And if you guys have been monitoring um, our giraffe, Gerald, who has an injured foot, um, we have been using that to see how his healing is progressing. So we'll tag the video of kind of his progress underneath this video so you can watch that if you haven't. But I just wanted to show you guys a couple pictures of what Gerald's foot looked like um, about a month ago when we first noticed that there was an issue with it. Um, and this was taken with that Digitherm camera. And then this was just this week. So you can see that with um, the treatments we've been doing here at the zoo that have ranged from um, cold laser therapy to getting a boot put on by a farrier. He's also on a lot of supplements and pain medications to try to just get him through this injury. Um, the, there's been a lot of improvement. So you can see that the area is a lot cooler, it's less hot, um, and that's how we can kind of monitor without being invasive on him without having to go and touch him and manipulate the area which he might want us to do. This is how we can see from afar using that special sixth sense um, how his feeling is progressing. That's pretty awesome. So we are super fortunate here to, be do all, to do all kinds of amazing things. Our vet staff works all the time really hard to help make sure our animals are always healthy, um, which is pretty exciting. So uh, we have also another little experiment that we're going to give a try today. Uh, so we're going to be posting um, an activity or experiment for you guys to do at home after this video. Uh, so hopefully you guys will be able to check it out and try it out yourselves and let let us know how that goes. Um, but for us, we're going to be giving, giving it a little try today to see if Monty likes certain sense, scents over others. So we have a few different kinds of scents that we're going to give a try out, right? Because he has that super great sense of smell with that tongue of his. So we're going to be showing you we have some perfume here, um, we have some vanilla, and then we also have some, some herbs and spices. And what we did is we actually put a little bit of each of those scents um, onto those plastic little uh, toys there. And we're going to bring Monty over and we're going to see if he's interested um, in smelling them. And we'll get to see if he maybe has a favorite smell. And you guys can comment down below if you guys have a favorite smell. I know one of my favorite smells is lavender. Um, but some of us like in baking cookies. That's another one of my favorites. So there's all kinds of yummy smells that we might like as people. And we're going to see today if our friend Monty is interested um, in any of the smells that we've provided for him today. So we're going to go see. And the way we're going to tell if he likes something or if he's particularly interested um, is if he actually goes to those sense of the, that that certain toy that has a smell on it, or if he starts flicking his, no his tongue an awful lot. So keep an eye out for that tongue. We're gonna see, oh my goodness, it looks like he's beelining straight for those herbs. Wow, and what kind of spice do we have here today? Oh, it looks like oregano. Um, so looks like he's really interested in that oregano. He, he came right over to it, so we'll see though. We'll give him some time to explore because it looks like he's starting to make his way over a little bit more. So look out for those tongue flicks. That's what we're looking for. I think he just really likes all the camera attention, personally. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I get, again, it looks like he kind of picked his favorite there. <laughs> He's saying, I'm gonna take this oregano home with me. Maybe make some pizza, which he won't eat, right? That's pretty silly. What do you think, Monty? Well, I think we have a clear winner here, which is pretty exciting. It looks like that our, our friend Monty is a fan of oregano, and maybe even other Italian food. I don't know, maybe we'll have to give him some meatballs. Now, our friend Monty, right, he is a snake, so we consider him to be a reptile, right? We, we've met a whole bunch of reptiles here so far. If you guys were here from the beginning, you met Dude the Box Turtle. Uh, we've met Sydney, the Blue Tongue Skink, and Hoggle, the Hognose. Um, and we have many more reptiles to come, and not just reptiles, though. We have, uh, the oregano is definitely the clear winner. He's going to take it home with him now. <laughs> Can I have that back? 
Maybe not. That's all right. You can have it. Uh, so we have a lot more animals coming up, you know, mammals, birds, all kinds of uh, amazing things. Uh, so we're going to start answering some of your questions. So it looks like Kate wants to know, how did Monty get his name? That's a great question. So he's a ball python. Uh, so we actually named him after the movie Monty Python. So we just call him Monty for short, but his full name is Monty Python. All right. So... Uh, Riley, Lisa, Amy, and Leah want to know how old he is. Oh, that's a great question. So Monty's actually been at the zoo for about 17 years. We he was in a he was a grown up when he came here, so we think he's about in his 20s. But these guys can live to be over 30, which is pretty awesome. Ooh, can Monty swim? That's a great question. Um, so he probably can. I wouldn't say it's his favorite hobby. They can spend some time in water. It's actually really important to help them shed those scales, right? Because Monty here, he is able to, to, uh, to shed these scales. So here, we're gonna move him over a little bit so that we can actually have some snake shed to show you guys. Um, so when Monty's gonna shed those scales, it's gonna look kind of similar to this. It almost looks kind of plasticky, but you can see those individual scales on there. And he's gonna shed them all in one, time, in one time, which is pretty awesome. What is the largest python? Awesome, and that's from Everett. Thanks, Everett. So the largest python in the world is probably the reticulated python. Those guys can grow to be like 35 feet long. They're considered one of the largest snakes on the planet. Um, pretty much tied up with the anaconda. All right, so Macy and Zach want to know, is he venomous? Oh my goodness, I'm so glad you guys asked because I totally forgot to tell you. He is not venomous at all. He's not poisonous, he's not venomous, he's totally safe to handle. He is very strong though. He's a constrictor kind of snake. So that's how he grabs onto his prey and eats it. He's gonna swallow it whole, um, but he's gonna give it a good hug right before he eats it. All right, Enzo, age five, wants to know, how do they adjust to their climate? Oh, how do they adjust to our climate when they're from Africa? That is a great question. So these guys, thankfully, they live inside here at the zoo. We have a pretty fancy setup for him that has all kinds of awesome lighting and heating. So we keep him toasty warm all the time. Uh, so he lives um, in a very balmy and 75 kind of weather here at the zoo um, in his own little house. Um, but these guys, I mean, he could have potentially been bred to be a pet event in the first place. Um, but these guys can be kept as pets. But again, just like we learned with Oliver yesterday, it's really important to do all your research before you decide to get a pet and take them home because even our friend uh, Monty here requires a lot of care. All right, so, ooh, Ryan wants to know, what do his spots represent? That's an excellent question. So those spots are actually going to help him be, going to help him camouflage. So you can see he's kind of under this little tree we have here. Um, and you might be able to see that there's some shadows under here. So in the, in the forest where he's going to be from, it's really intense sunlight. So when the sun shines through the trees, it creates these sunspots on the ground and those spots are just like those sunspots and they're gonna allow him to kind of blend in to his surroundings right they're gonna allow him to camouflage on the forest floor or in the trees because these guys are excellent climbers that's actually why we, we brought out this little tree for him today see if he'll climb around for us all right so uh, Beechwood is his skin smooth or bumpy oh excellent question so it is both. I know that's kind of confusing. For the most part, he's actually pretty smooth, but you can see he has all these individual little scales and they're a little tiny bit bumpy, right? He's not rough though. He's still pretty smooth. That's a great question. Oh, Derek, are his teeth sharp? Oh, Derek, his teeth are very sharp. Luckily, we, none of us have ever found out, um, but his teeth are very sharp and we can see that when he grabs onto his prey. We do feed him mice here at the zoo um, and when he snags onto those mice, you can kind of see those teeth um, and that they are very sharp, right? And But they're meant just for holding onto his food so we can swallow it whole because he's not gonna be chewing up his food like we do. All right, Bella, does he live in trees? He sure does, yeah, so he loves to climb. So if he's able to hang out in trees, I'm sure he will. Oh, and Lydia wants to know, does he like to climb things? He sure does. Oh my goodness, guys, you have some absolutely amazing questions today. 
All right, so Garrett, can pythons be different colors? For sure. So even ball pythons can come in different color variations. Typically when you see ball pythons, they're gonna be tan and black and a little brown and gray in there. They're mostly gonna be this color, but they can be different colors as well. And the different species of pythons will change colors too. So there's all kinds of amazing things. Ooh, Christopher wants to know what's his favorite food. So, you know, I said we feed him mice, but his favorite food is probably rats. I mean, you know, he likes to all kinds of stuff, mice and rats and all that good stuff. Allie wants to know how often does he shed? Great question, Allie. So he's going to be shedding probably a few times a year, maybe once every, every other month or once every few months. Monty is probably full grown right now. Um, he's an adult snake. He may grow a little bit larger, um, but for the most part, he's pretty much full grown. Uh, so he's only gonna be shedding those scales just to stay nice and clean, right? Because do you think snakes take bubble baths? No, probably not, right? I don't know if he'd like bubble baths. So instead, he's gonna shed those scales and that's gonna let him uh, keep those scales nice and shiny clean. And Chris wants to know, how much does he weigh? Oh, Chris, great question. He weighs somewhere between two to five pounds. So right now, Monty, he probably weighs close to about three pounds, um, but ball pythons can weigh probably over five pounds um, once they're full grown. All right, uh, Mariah and AJ, are they good pets? So you know what? These guys can be good pets. Um, they do require a lot of care, right? They need special heating and lighting. Remember, our friend Monty here likes it very warm and he needs warm to make sure that his, to make sure that he's, he stays nice and healthy, right? Because that's where he's, he's a cold-blooded animal and he's from a tropical area, so we need to make sure that we provide all that for him. And that kind of stuff can be pretty expensive, right? He's also an exotic animal, which means that you can't always take him to a normal vet, right? So you'd have to take him to an exotic veterinarian, which is something to think about if you want to get a pet other than a cat or a dog. So um, they do make good pets, however, they do require a lot of care. So just like with anything, you want to make sure you do your research before you take one of these guys home. All right, so Tegan, does he get enrichment and what is it? Ah, oh, Tegan, that's an excellent question. So for those of you who don't know, enrichment is things that we give to our animals and particularly our mammals and birds and snakes and all, any animal that we have here at the zoo, even our giraffes get enrichment. It's things that we give to our animals to make sure that they can play and keep their mind active and just give them all kinds of hobbies and things to do. So we do give Monty enrichment. We will give him things like trees to climb on. We'll give him some bark, things to smell. We might even give him some oregano, right? Or other perfumes or things, fun things to smell in his enclosure to give him something new to experience, right? We try to mix it up for these guys to make sure that they're always staying active and their brains are always working. Amy wants to know, do his jaws open like the hognose snake? Amy, I'm so glad you watched our our hog nose video, and I'm so glad you remembered that. His jaws do open in the same way, right? They have all these little pieces in their jaws which help them move around and help them stretch those jaws wide open, just like our friend the hog nose snake, Hoggle. Thanks for, thanks for sticking around, Amy. All right, and Addy wants to know, where do they live in the world? Oh, in the wild, yeah. So in the wild, these guys are gonna be from Central to Western Africa. Um, they like to live in a bunch of different kinds of habitats, but they do prefer forested habitats or the savanna. All right, and uh, Raul and Danny, Ivy, is he prey or predator? That's a great question, he is prey and predator. So these guys can fall prey to things like humans and crocodiles and wild dogs in Africa, but they also will prey on things like mice and other kinds of uh, animals, right? Thing, other types of small animals. All right, so Luca, what is the largest food he can eat? Oh, great question. So he is probably not gonna eat anything much bigger than the widest part of his body. So if you take a look right here, right, this is kind of the widest part of his body. So he's really not gonna eat anything much bigger than like maybe the size of a tennis ball. That's probably about as big as he'd be able to try to eat. But remember, he has those super stretchy jaws. He's gonna be able to open them up big and wide. He's gonna be able to swallow that almost whole. All right, so our last question for today is, Aaron, where are his ears? Oh, you're right, where are they? 
Uh, unfortunately, he actually doesn't really have any. So if you take a look at the side of his head, he doesn't have any ears on the side of his head, but he is able to feel vibrations. So he's probably able to kind of almost hear me talking. Um, not that he's listening like we do, but he's gonna be uh, feeling those vibrations, um, which is pretty awesome. So guys, thanks again for joining us today on Zoo School Live. We're so glad you came out to meet Monty today. He had a lot of fun doing some of these experiments with us. Just a reminder to make sure that you guys check out our activity that we're gonna post soon. We did release a YouTube video of our how to make those bunny ears from yesterday. So if you're interested, pop over and try to make those. Um, again, some ways you can support Feel free to subscribe on our YouTube channel or just keep watching here and you can always donate to our emergency fund or purchase a membership, which is amazing. There's a crazy sale going on, so definitely check that out on our website today. We hope to see you guys next Monday for Zoo School to start back up and we have a lot of fun videos we're going to be posting over the weekend. Too, yeah, so so, out those. yeah, absolutely. We have nature play coming this weekend, so lots of fun things for you guys to do at home. All right, guys, have Bye. a happy Friday. Bye.